It is hot out there. Colorado, we hit a record today, 102 degrees. This is just the beginning of a days long stretch of triple digits. Hot dry weather means increased fire danger as well. And firefighters across our area were busy today, first on a slow moving fire just south of Boulder and then on to a series of house fires. We'll get to that in a moment after we bring in meteorologist Lauren Robinson to talk about what we're in for here for a couple days. Hot. That's Understood. What, yes. You want more time to talk about it? Yeah, sure. All right, cool. I'll take a little more time. <laughs> well, you know, once temperatures get to a certain point, heat is heat and it becomes dangerous. That's what we're watching for for the next few days. Today, we did see those temperatures reach 102, which broke our existing record of 101 set on this day in 1971. But even as we go through the rest of the weekend, we're going to stay in triple digits. So we're likely to see more records fall Saturday and Sunday. Monday, temperatures cool down just a tad. We stay really hot, but we're out of the triple digits for Monday, so I don't think we break a record, but you still want to watch for these very high temperatures all the way into the start of next week. Today, outside of DAA, we saw lots of triple digits across the Front Range and Eastern Plains. Even out west, we made it to 104 this afternoon out in Grand Junction. The high country couldn't escape the heat either. 80s and 90s up in the mountains earlier today. Now we take a look at our HD Doppler radar. We're going to be pretty dry. We do have a couple light scattered showers here off to the south, but coming up in my full seven day forecast, we're going to talk more about the warm evening ahead tonight. We're going to talk more about the dangerously hot weather through the weekend, and we do have relief in forecast. I'll have all of those details for you just ahead. Rough day to be out fighting a fire, among other things. Saw a couple of fires today. Y yes, we did. 90s reporter Rhea Jaws in Aurora tonight, where a three story apartment building was burning today. Rhea? Kyle and Jenny, firefighters were out here for hours in the 100 plus degree weather and they are still here right now. They said they're going to be here all night helping all those residents that have been displaced by this fire. When I first saw it, it was just like a, a small, a small fire. And then when I went upstairs to go let them know. In the few minutes it took Alex Cruz to run up two floors and notify his neighbors. The roof had already caught on fire. I was coughing like so bad because of how bad it was. It had already expanded at that point. Bing. There were flames, I think you said above 10 feet off the roof line. So you can imagine the, the intensity of the heat and the fuel load that was there that would create 10 foot flames off the roof. The fire took hours to put out, the heat not making it any easier. When it's warmer, the, the products of combustion, whether it be the structure, structure of the exterior siding, the roof, or anything on the, the balconies catch fire more easily. Firefighters also battling those triple digit temperatures. You see our fire crews wearing protective clothing. That's a equivalent to wearing like a, a snow coat and snow pants and then going outside in 100 degree weather and then going outside 100 degree weather doing heavy work inside of a building that's already caught fire. So you can imagine the stress that these guys are under. One firefighter was treated on scene for heat exhaustion. The rest did what they could to keep cool. They sweat quite a bit and they expel quite a bit of uh, electrolytes, so they need energy to replace what, what they've already burnt and, and used. So that those watermelon, the snacks, the pizza, the Gatorade, all help to replenish uh, people's energy so they can continue working. Usually firefighters don't get watermelon on scene, but it usually isn't 102 degrees either. It's the first time I've seen it, but um, you know, anything to get, uh, you know, electrolytes in. Firefighters were also dealing with a water main break, which made it even harder to put out that fire. And aside from that one firefighter who dealt with heat exhaustion, Aurora Fire said no one else was injured. And the cause of the fire is still under investigation. Reporting live in Aurora, Rhea Ja, 9 News. Firefighters are also going to spend the night keeping an eye on the dinosaur fire in Boulder County. Flames were spotted just before noon today, about four miles southwest of CU's campus near the NCAR Mesa lab. Fortunately, the fire was slow moving as of tonight. It's only gone through about three and a half acres. No one was hurt, no evacuations. An air quality advisory is in effect for South Boulder overnight. Despite firefighters getting a handle on this pretty quickly, it was certainly stressful for people in the near vicinity. So I know from a public uh, perspective, I, I lived here during the Marshall Fire. I know that there's, there's a lot of fear in this community around wildfires. So I just want to say it's not necessarily the same kind of fire. Um, so just, just to let everyone know that crews are up there at this time. Uh, they're saying just avoid the area and let them, let them get their jobs done. Immediate concern was hikers up there on nearby trails. Firefighters were able to clear all of them out. 
wasn't easy, especially in this heat. Wearing full firefighter gear in these heat conditions, you got to rotate in and out. So they're also a lot of, they're taking turns, they're staying hydrated, they're doing what they got to do so that they can keep, keep doing their job. So there's a lot of folks up there. Boulder County emergency managers have set up a line to get information directly to the public. You see that there on your screen. You can text BOCO INFO, all one word, BOCO INFO, to 888-777, and they'll send you information back in return. We also have that on 9news.com. Firefighters in Pueblo County are making good progress tonight on the Oak Ridge fire. It is now 89% contained. Firefighters are continuing chipping operations on the perimeter to hold that line. Fires burned about 1,300 square acres, around two square miles, since it started nearly three weeks ago. Also not a great day for air travel in Colorado. DIA already has some of the thinnest air in the country because of our altitude. And extra heat makes the air even thinner. It's harder for large airplanes to get off the ground. You have to have an extra long runway for takeoff on a hot summer day. Luckily, DIA does have some of the longest runways in the whole country. The airport had nearly 350 delays and 17 cancellations today. We have asked, but it is unclear how many of those were related to the heat trouble. Pilots OK after making an emergency landing today in Sedalia, south of Roxborough State Park. Douglas County deputies and West Metro Fire went out there just before one this afternoon. The sheriff's office says the pilot reported mechanical trouble. Engine started to sputter and he lost power at 2,000 feet. Started looking for a place to put the plane down. He was the only one on board at the time and was not hurt. Aurora police are now on the hunt for a permanent police chief. Again, the seventh time this job's been open in five years. Today, the department's latest interim chief says she doesn't want the job. Heather Morris was named interim chief after Art Acevedo left his interim gig earlier this year. In a statement released today, Morris said she will not apply for the position. She called it a personal decision. It's a tough job. Comes with court-ordered supervision for how APD polices communities of color. APD and Morris have also spent the past few weeks facing protests after an officer shot and killed an unarmed black man, Kylan Lewis. Aurora has not had a permanent police chief since Vanessa Wilson left back in 2022. A star DNA analyst for CBI was mishandling evidence for years, despite repeated warning signs. A colleague accused Missy Woods of tampering with evidence back in 2018, and now investigators want to know who knew what when. Former CBI director John Camper was the one leading the agency in 2018. That's when somebody in the lab caught Woods tampering with evidence. Coworker reported to her bosses, but director Camper says he doesn't remember people in the lab telling him about that serious complaint. No internal investigation was launched, and the people at the lab attributed the issue to Woods' mental health. Because it was a mental health is what we determined, so that's where we set our, our, our effort to try to correct was for mental health. People in the lab told investigators they did update CBI Director Camper. He says he does not recall any conversations about the misreporting of data. Woods' attorney says the lab should have been paying attention to those warning signs, that she told management that she was stressed, burned out, yet they continue to assign her the most high-profile cases.